after watching this movie, it occurred to me sort of how many interesting sort of similarities there are between this and 1408. And, and not the least of which being, of course, that sort of contained, it has it takes place in these sort of very finite spaces, but also um, that it is fundamentally sort of about two, two characters both sort of liberated to an extent by their belief in something or, or their belief in a situation. Um, when you when you came into this, uh, obviously the the actual subject matter was was different. But you know, do you think about uh, the potential similarities, or, or or even things that are preoccupations for you as a filmmaker when you're choosing a project? Well, yeah, I think you do, whether you know it or not. But actually, it reminded me even more about the Swedish film I called uh, I did called Evil, mm -hmm. which is about a, a young man who is a boy who is sent to a boarding school in Sweden in the 50s, so a very different arena from this obviously. But it's also, it's both are a coming of age story in a way, and it's about finding your way and, and all of these things, and very different movies, but I actually felt similarities to that. I think you write about 1408, and, and you obviously it's the same guy who sort of did it, so uh, I'm sure that is uh, from a style point of view, and so some of these spaces are, 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 are definitely similar, I can feel, but it was not like a conscious, you know, decision to, to, to you don't, you try to avoid that, obviously, but, you know, you are who you are, so uh, everything is connected in certain ways, yes. Well, I guess, uh, then, maybe more specifically, is, is the question of faith, or a question of that sort of belief in something, is that something that uh, is a persistent question that you face, that maybe to some extent you're trying to sort of exercise or explore, no pun intended, you know, in a, on, on film. Yeah, I think we all do. I think wherever, um, different, different situations, like different where, where we are in age and so on, we, we, have to, we have to take a break and sort of explore these questions. Uh, what it have to do with faith and uh, how we continue, how we, how we move forward and all of these things. I mean, if you, uh, it can be about, you know, going to church or going to yoga or whatever whatever suits uh, uh, um, yourself to, to find you know some sort of inner peace or find a, a, a place where you can actually be with yourself in, in, in a real way so that's that's important to all of us and I think um, there's certain other, some aspects of these movies that definitely deals with, with that and also about memory and loss and about confront yourself uh, with, 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 with the traumas that you that you had in life and that you need to, to re-explore, to free yourself from them, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were speaking with the, the actors and, and the other filmmakers earlier, they were talking about, um, in many different permutations, about the idea that um, we sort of fundamentally, uh, like as human beings, have this sort of need, to a certain extent, for empirical fact, some, some sort of reassurance that things exist. Um, do you consider yourself like a, like a, you know sort of dyed in the wool empiricist? Do you do you think of yourself um, you know as a, a sort of more spiritual minded person? And you know which part of you, I guess, in that sort of dichotomy, like was driven maybe to 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 explore this subject matter? Well, uh, I I don't I think. Uh, Again, I think it wasn't the exorcist, the subject matter itself, that was the, the most interesting thing to me. Uh, I think I'm really interested in these questions that you're, that you're asking about, and I believe, I believe in believing. And you know, you can be very fascinated about something, and, and doesn't really necessarily mean that you, that, you, that you fundamentally believe in it. I can be fascinated by UFOs or ghosts doesn't necessarily mean that I, 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 I believe in them per se, but I can read books about them and I can be really drawn. Same thing here, uh, really. And, and um, I mean, exorcism exists and, you know, people go to see exorcists and um, it doesn't necessarily have to be as dramatic as, as in the films that we've seen in Hollywood movies. It can be like uh, you uh, or I or anybody else going to see a, a psychiatrist or a shrink and, and we get help to to, to deal with our own personal demons, right? So, uh, uh, I, 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 I think, uh, you know, there's two sides of all of us. One is, yes, very matter of fact, and yes, I, I, I like when things are, are explained and clear, but, you know, uh, another part of me can, be, can, can definitely uh, be more 
unsure about the, 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 uh, how, how things are, are, are held together, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, there's obviously a pretty well-established sort of cinematic language for, for religious-themed sort of horror films, um, even if this isn't you know, maybe even strictly a, like a horror film, but it, it does have that those sort of overtones. Um, how careful did you have to be in terms of either avoiding or, you know, maybe twisting some of those visual or, or um, convention, the, the conventions or the visual sort of cues um, in, in the telling of this, both to make it distinctive um, and recognizable and uh, maybe most of all something that was like authentic and dramatic because because what I think a real strength of the movie is is that it manages to carry a, like a, a believable gravitas and yet it is it does have a like a dramatically compelling sort of momentum yeah I think yeah uh, that was this was important exactly what you're talking about now which is it's based on a journalistic work and not 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 a not a novel with, with a strong narrative mm -hmm. so the narrative we have to sort of put into this to this material and you know uh, you try to I mean some sort of cliches you can lean towards because they could be good cliches and you try to avoid the bad ones obviously and uh, you have to go with your gut feeling there obviously and you know there's a lot of there is a lot of um, strong uh, strong messages you send out if you put a, put, a, put a crucifix on the wall and you know and and we are we are dealing with an arena and we are in a world where where, where those where those uh, objects are, are are very much there and you, you obviously have to choose your you know you have to choose your um, where how where you put it and you have to you have to be careful so you don't overload every image with with um, um, uh, with those things, those objects, but um, uh, I think basically you go with your gut feeling, and you obviously you've seen good examples, you've seen bad examples of of, of, of this in other in other movies. So, um, but the most important thing was to to to, to 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 sort of keep the reality of it within the within the sort of quite dramatic narrative that was that was part of the film, you know, and. and um, and uh, obviously, we we are we are dramatizing uh, things here, and, and uh, but that's okay. Hmm. Well, ultimately, how important is a, a degree of accuracy or realism? Because you could tell a perfectly accurate or realistic depiction of all the events in that journalistic work, but that wouldn't necessarily make a good movie. I mean, wh at what point do you maybe, or there may be a specific example in this film, but in general, do you have sort of a barometer for? where you need to make a departure to emphasize, to tell the most interesting or compelling story possible, even at the expense of a degree of accuracy or realism? Well, um, I think again, I think the book was a great foundation because it gave a lot of knowledge about the actual, you know, the facts about this. And, and, and we have, you know, when we, and I think to put in reality into, the, into, into fiction was actually a, you know, it was a better way to go. I mean, for instance, the the first scene, uh, the first exorcist scene in the film, where Anthony Hopkins is 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 working with this young girl, and 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 the, and the cell phone suddenly rings in the middle of, of of the exorcism, and he had to take this call, and and so on and so on, which is a sort of offbeat situation. But that that's actually that that comes from reality, and 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 and. Uh, and I, I put that in because I felt it was it was a great example of, of, of how reality can be really strong in in a in a, in a, in a narrative uh, situation like that in any way it was. So, um, but it's it's a fine line, you know, and, and um, it's it's uh, it was important to to keep both sides uh, to keep track on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony was talking earlier about. Um, his his interest in introducing certain elements, certain lines of dialogue, things like that, that were not only uh, sort of applicable to the character, but even sort of exemplified his own feelings about some of the things. Um, what was something, or if anything, that kind of caught you off guard, particularly at the end of this movie when he has, I'm sure, had plenty of stuff to learn in terms of dialogue, but at the same time, it seems like like at the moment of this sort of possession, you know, it seems like such a ripe opportunity for an actor to like kind of, you know, go go to to a certain degree of extreme. I mean, you know, was there anything that really like caught you off guard that you thought was too far, or was 
you know, that you thought was a great addition or ex extension of what was already there? No, yeah, I mean, he, obviously the script gave us a good roadmap, but, you know, it's like, it, it was, in a situation like this, it was, I think Anthony uh, was leaning a lot towards his, his own past because we made this priest Welsh, and, and Tony is Welsh, so that's where it comes from. So they, they share that with the priest. And, you know, there is a, there is a, there is a moment when, uh, when Father Lucas is possessed by the, by the demon, if you want, and he, he pushes Michael up against the wall and he talks about, um, you know, here I am, poor little Welshman, uh, uh, dressed up for the carnival, mummy, which is obviously have to do with the state is in, demonized, but also have to do with Tony's own background and he's talking to his, you don't know if it's Tony's mother he's talking about or Lucas, but there is, that's, that's an interesting, that's just one example of when, when Tony's life and, 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 and the fictional life of this priest sort of joins together. And there's a lot of moments like that. And I think that's what, what Anthony was, why he was drawn to this part in the beginning. It's, it's, it's a man in his, uh, in his age uh, who have lived m many years and is now also more looking back on a life than, than, than looking forward. So it, it's, um, it's, uh, uh, I think it, it really was inspiring for him to, 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 to do a, a, a guy at this crossroad in life, you know, mm -hmm. when, when, uh, when a lot of things have happened and uh, you can look back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe just one more question. Um, the earlier you said that you know you certainly weren't trying to prognosticate a potential sort of commercial trend to to do a movie like this um but why do you think it is that that audiences or there it, that it's sort of in the zeitgeist that why why is this sort of question this sort of theological quandary has seemed to to sort of regain a sense of a, a sort of prominence in the in, in the mainstream of people thinking about it now i mean is it is it just a sort of Arbitrary? Do you think that there that like what's going on in the world has precipitated people thinking about spirituality in that way? Or I think yeah, and the, the more you know, the more technological the world becomes, and the more sort of organized the world becomes, the more people look at you know other aspects of life and, 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 and those questions that that you raise about spirituality and, and beliefs and, and, and so on. So there's always there will always be, and also the unknown. Obviously, the things that we can't explain, and, and, and um, also the, the 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 fear that we will lose control over ourselves, and and and, and uh, that other forces will sort of uh, will 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 uh, be in charge. That's something that 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 humans have feared forever, and been writing about, and been you know, and and and, and been dramat you know dramatized in, in all kinds of ways. So that's, I think that's part of our nature, to be fascinated and interested and, and fear those, these kinds of things. Um, you know, uh, we go, a lot of people in Rome and Italy, for instance, go to an exorcist uh, when they feel they have to deal with the demons, the same way that we go to a psychotherapist or a shrink or whatever you want to call it, when we need to deal with our demons in this society or Sweden where I come from. So, you know, I think it's, um, there's a lot of similarities. It doesn't have to be as dramatic as we learn from mainstream Hollywood films to go to an exorcist. It, it's, it, it, it can be quite straightforward also.